Hi there, back again here with me, Rati in Mummy Beluga Investing. This video is another breakaway from the stocks in the Street Times Index. Today we're going to talk about Valuetronic Holdings Limited with the stock symbol SGXBN2. After looking at the numbers and other qualitative insights, my quick take for Valuetronics Holdings are first, it's a growth company in challenging environment. Two, it is also an undervalued and under leverage company, which makes it very interesting. Okay, follow my videos as I look at the numbers. Please consider to subscribe because it means a lot for a beginner YouTuber like me. If you have any comments or input, do not hesitate to put in comment section. I'll, it'll probably help me to get more perspectives and learn more. Okay, before getting into the data, I read out the disclaimer first. Okay, disclaimer, this video is an amateur video. My main intention is to record my own journey learning and practicing investing from scratch. This video shouldn't replace any financial advice and need a suggestion to take position, buy or sell in the stock market. Please conduct your own research before making any decision, but if you do conduct your own research, I hope this video is useful in your decision making. Okay, now let's start from a quick company profile. Uh, Valleytronic was established in 1992 as Honor Tone Limited. It was headquartered in Hong Kong with facilities uh, in Dan Shui Town, Huiyang District, Guangdong Province, near Hong Kong. Uh, it was started as an Electronic Manufacturing Services, or EMS in short, or those a company that make product for other company. It then became a holding company in 2006 with incorporation of Valuetronics Holding Limited. Valuetronics was listed on SGX main board in 2007. In 2019, it started expanding the manufacturing facilities to Vietnam as a response to US-China trade war. Then this year, Vietnam facilities started its operation. Over the year, it has expanded its services to two segments. Uh, those are consumer electronics products, uh, or CE in short, and industrial and commercial electronics, or ICE in short. From its 2021 annual report, 70% of its total revenue come from ICE or industrial and commercial electronic segments. One of the company's efficiencies deemed to be reflected from their simple and reusable annual report materials. As we can see in the screen, the chairman's photo have not been changed since their 2011 annual reports. Some backgrounds are sophisticatedly edited, but we can see striking similarities. This is a sense, uh, this in a sense reduced the cost of photo shoot for which is probably not really a value added activity. Okay, now shareholders. Uh, as of 17th of June 2021, 2021, from their 2021 annual report, we can see that two of the top managements hold a large chunk of the company shares. They are Mr. Che Fong Hing. Hopefully, I pronounce the name correctly. Uh, he's the chairman and managing director with 17.44% ownership. And then the second one is Mr. Cho Kok Kit, Executive Director and the Founder. He held 7.35% of the company shares. Another top management are Mr. Huang Kai Wing, Director of Anna Tone Limited with 1.45% 1 1 share. The rest are distributed in multiple custodians and few individuals. Uh, noting that 70.21% of the shares are held in the hands of public. Okay, so that's the brief overview of the company. Now let's take a look at the company's performance. So here, as usual, I plotted Valuetronics earning per share for the last 13 years. I also added a horizontal green dash line as a guide to zero level. Earning below this line indicates that the company is recording a loss for that particular year. 
quickly we can see that Valuetronics had not recorded any loss since 2008. The earning is in general trend the, the earning general trend is increasing with several dips in 2009 2013 and 2016. for the 2009 dip the company reported the year as a very tough year which contributed by global financial situation and natural disaster in my interpretation, it might be related to the U.S. subprime mortgage crisis. The company's profitability was impacted by the decreased in customer demand. On a natural disaster, it reported that flood had affected their China's facility operation. The Danshi plant that located in Guangdong province was uh, has experienced a severe torrential rain, which caused unexpected flash flood. This had cost 10 million Hong Kong dollars, one off recovery charge. Since then, the Valutronics facility have, has been moved to Daya Bay, which seems to be better protected from natural disaster. Since then, earnings seem to be improved till 2013. There was a dip again, but not as much as 2009. From their 2013 annual report, it seems that 2013 is a busy year for Valuetronics with several operation restructuring. The dip of earnings seems to be attributed to termination of their licensing business, which in turn reduced their revenue, incurred some impairment in asset and termination fee. Another costly restructuring was Valuetronics. Uh, it moved into a more automation. This move added to short-term expenses, but I think we'll have some or huge or even huge long-term benefits. From the EPS growth, the restructuring seemed to be working. The company earning improved till it dropped again in 2016. The company reported in reduced in earnings is attributed to the decline in their consumer electronic segment as they are exiting the mass market LED bulb business. As previously mentioned, the company has two business segments. They are industrial and commercial electronic or ICE and consumer electronic. Okay. Since the 2018, since 2018 till 2021, Valuetronics earning growth seems to be softening. The company attributed those several overlapping challenging situations. The first one is the prolonged US-China trade tension since 2018, which prompted Valuetronics to diversify their production facility. One of that is the new facility in Vietnam. Okay, at the same time in 2019 till now, Valuetronics and its cost customer are affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Then added to that, at the end of 2020, the company saw further challenging situation with global component shortage that reduced the company's ability to meet its demand. What impressed me further is that Valuetronics financial prudence, it achieved this growth with a very minimum bank borrowing while stacking cash along the way. I'll show you uh, later. Okay, uh, this has helped the company to stay resilient in the challenging time. Here, I added the level of bank borrowings. There's only two financial year where the company has bank borrowing there were in 2011 and 2012 as you can see here on the screen and here is the the amount of cash that it hoarded over the years it kept on increasing uh, giving the assurance of company's strong safety net as the making of this video valuetronic has more than 1 billion hong kong dollar in the bank banks for the last two Yes, which is equivalent to around 170 million Singapore dollar and almost 130 million US dollar. A very cushy safety net. Okay, so that was the juicy financial of Valuetronics. Now let's take a look at its dividend sensibility. Okay, to see the sensibility of dividend payout, so here I plotted three layers of information. 
The first one is the dividend payout over the last 13 years, which I plotted here as red round markers connected by a thick, thick red line, as we can see on the screen. On each of the points, I have annotated with two numbers. The numbers above uh, are dividend payouts in Singapore dollar, and the ones below are the payout ratios to respe respective years earning per share. As a comparison to the earnings here, I pull it again, uh, the earnings per share as a thinner red line with the same color, red. At a glance, we can see that Valuetronics has been quite consistent in its dividend distribution since it was listed in SGX in 2007. It also very prudent distribution in my opinion. So far, its dividend payout has been between 2 to 40 percent of its earning. Quite okay. 2012 dividend payout is cut short seem to be uh, related to the company's operation restructuring that it needs to preserve some cash. We also noted before that those years uh, were, were when Felitronic has bank borrowings. Okay, so far from the information here, the payout seems to be okay. The next question will be what are the numbers if we compare them with Valuetronic stock price movements? Okay, so let's look at its dividend yields over the years. Now, this is what Dividend Hunter might be waiting so far. He uploaded the, the average dividend yield per year as the, uh, the, the round markers. At each markers, I place an error bar which represents the range of yield over that year. The variation in a year is caused by the volatility level of the share price. The yield increases if the share price decreases and vice versa. Okay, now let's look at the graph. Okay, let's look at the plot that we have here. It is a rather extreme plot in my opinion because it has it had super high yields from 2007 to 2011. Uh, those people that hold the stock between those years have doubled their investment within a year from dividend alone. That's quite impressive. In other words, they are now holding the share at no cost if they still hold the share until now. Since 2012, price seems to appreciate that the yield goes down to most of the market rate except in 2013, where the yield was about 22%. That was still quite impressive. Even though the yield has gone down quite significantly, it is still more than 4%. In 2020, the yield was 7.11%, which is still much better than bank deficit. Okay, so that was Valuetronic dividend yield over the time. Now let's look at the price movements. The next question for me will be, is the price still reasonable? Okay, let's check. Okay, to see the Valuetronic market valuation, here I plotted four layers of information. They are, first, the share price, which represents market valuation of the company. It is also the easiest information that I can obtain. I can use the search term Valuetronic share price and it will pop me with this graph. But price alone sometimes misleading for the value of company and its prospects. So I'll include some other fundamental indicators to help me to decide. The second layer of information is the 10 times earning multiplier, which here I plotted as a dashed green line. 10 times earning multiply can be considered as the price where price to earning, that is the PE ratio, is at 10. For me, I consider 10 times earning multiply has two purposes. The first one, it indicates that the, the price where I expect where I have higher chance to break even within 10 years. Okay, you could plot five times earning multiply if your investment horizon is five years, for example. And then, as a consequence for this first reason, I consider share price above 10 times earning multiplied to be expensive, at least for me. Okay, the third layer of information is 15 times earning multiply. With the same principle as a 10 times earning multiply, price above this indicator will be deemed as expensive. Here I plotted the 15 times earning multiply as a dashed yellowish 
green line, just like the traffic line. I'll start feeling, feeling nervous if the price crosses this line, particularly for non-growth company. The fourth layer of information is a 20 times earning multiply. Here I plotted as a dashed red line. I would consider share price to be super expensive if it ever crossed this line. For non-growth company, I consider to cut down my position if these happen. Okay, so now let's see what's going on with Valuetronic's share price. Quickly, I can see that Valuetronic has been undervalued by the market. The share price was extremely low till 2013. It really fit the definition of penny stock. Since 2014, the share price have been rallying till it hits resistant at 10 times earning multiply in 2018. I would attribute this resistance to the US-China prolonged trade war that markets see as company's possible operation challenge. Now there are seem to be support level at around 40 cents. To look at that further, let's add one more fundamental indicator. Now I rarely done this as there is not much undervalued company that I've been analyzing so far. So here I added five times earning multiply as a dashed black line. It, cl it clearly shows a strong price support at uh, 40 cents since 2018. As I've mentioned earlier, uh, my reasonable price is usually a 10 times earning multiply, which is for uh, Valuetronic is at 0 0.7 Singapore dollars or 70 cents per share. As the making of this video on the 30th of July 2021, Valuetronic share price is at 0 0.6 Singapore dollar per share or 60 cents Singapore dollar. I think the price is quite a bargain. So far, I'm quite interested in collecting this share. The stock has checked all items in my list. So the next question, if I want to time the market, when should I add positions for this stock? So here I try to find a pattern of the price dip. In this plot, I zoomed the timeline to the last mm -hmm. three years from 2018 to the current time. Furthermore, I add a notation D in vertical red thin dashed line, for example, here. Uh, these lines, each with a letter D, as you can see on the screen, it marked the timing of each dividend payout. Uh, unfortunately, there's not so consistent pattern that the price spike prior to dividend payout. The price only goes down a little bit after the dividend payout. Okay, now wrap up. After looking at the numbers and other qualitative insight, I can say that... Valuetronic is currently undervalued. It is a growing company with good dividend yield and very cushy safety nets. It also has a very prudent management. That makes me interested in making a position in this company. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave comments and please subscribe to my channel because it means a lot for me. It may benefit you too from my analysis. Okay, uh, that's all and bye.